Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 23 friends. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my warm and charming co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Madison? Pretty good. So we have a special guest today, do we not? Yes, we do. How about you introduce our guest? Well, my, well, our special guest today is one of my best friends, Mariah Ponto. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. So today we will be talking about friendship. Yep. I think it's important for everyone to have friends. I think there's a lot of uh, benefit that comes from having friends that you can turn to, that can support you, that you can enjoy time with. Uh, So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what it means to be a friend. We're going to talk about why teenage friendships are important. Uh, We'll look at some of the benefits uh, of teenage friendships, some of which I wasn't even aware of until I did the research myself. Uh, There's a surprising number of health benefits to to having friends. Really? There are. Yeah, we'll talk about those. Then we'll talk about tips for parents for talking to your teens about friendships. And then we'll do a little bit of question and answer at the end there. So, uh, we ready to go? Yep. You ready, Mariah? All right. So, for our definition today, I went to Parents Reach Out. It's an Australian site that had probably the most clear definition. They define friendships as friendships to a teenager are important on many levels, from being a support network to providing both positive and negative influence. Learning to start, change, or maintain friendships is a skill teenagers all need to learn and work on. As a parent, taking the time to understand how your child is experiencing their world and knowing how to remain connected can help them to navigate these relationships successfully and independently. So, friendships need to be understood by teens as well as parents. I can see that. So... I think, I think that's pretty clear. Pretty much. So the next thing we're going to talk about is why teenage friendships are important. So this comes from a website called RaisingChildren.net. Again, another Australian one. Um, it says, for teenagers, good friends can be like a personal support group. Friends and friendships give teenagers the following. And I'd like to get your guys' thoughts on this. Okay. A sense of belonging, a feeling of being valued, and help with developing confidence. How do you how do you think your friends do for you regarding that, Maddie? Well, let's see. Um I definitely think belonging, giving you more confidence level is definitely something that my friends give me, cause like like, when I'm around my friends, I feel like I'm not alone. Like, whenever my friends aren't there, I just feel like I'm alone. No one really no one really wants to talk to me. I basically feel like I'm invisible, like I've said before. But when I'm with my friends, I feel included and I feel a sense of belonging. Okay. The next thing they talk about is a sense of security and comfort that comes from being with others going through similar experiences. Mariah, do you get that kind of feeling from your friends? A little. Do you have any, like, shared, I don't know, 
difficulties, usually it's, it's, I don't want to say negative, but usually it's the challenges that we go through where our friends tend to shine the most. Do you have a lot of shared experiences like that with your friends? Not really much. Okay. Do you feel as though you go through things and, and it would be nice to have friends that had shared experiences? Yeah. Yeah, it does help. It does help. The next thing on the list that they have here is uh, information about the changes that puberty brings and what's going on physically and emotionally. Now, Maddie, you and I have already had a, a two-part series on this, so I think we all know your thoughts on this one. Yep. Um, I'll, I'll turn this one over to Mariah again. Going through puberty and, and all the challenges that it comes with, have you found a sense of support or anything that comes from your other friends who go through that? Um, Maddie, because she talks about when we were in school, we always, like, sit at like recess at the wall and we talk about like stuff how like we're going on mm -hmm. like stuff like that so yeah besides maddie are there any other kids that you confide in with stuff because i know it's a very private subject to talk about our other friend tara okay well that's good so there there is some shared a burden we'll say you know where you're not dealing with it all yourself right uh, let's see, a way to experiment with different values, roles, and identities and ideas. Now, this is something that um, it's kind of vague in the way it's worded, but it allows you to, to, I guess what they're saying is, you know, you can talk about how you'd respond to a certain situation. So, for instance, if, if you got into an argument with a friend and you can talk that argument out with other people, it might teach you how to respond. Do you find, Maddie, that, that you do similar things like that? I mean, yeah, like whenever me and Lindsay got into a fight in the morning, me and Mariah would normally talk about it, and I'd eventually get some of my anger on, then I'd calm down and eventually decide, and then by that time I would be able to figure out the best way to respond to Lindsay and about the fight. I mean, the last fight we had, which was a little while ago, I had decided to give Lindsay a little gift that I made to get her happy, and eventually we did make up. And, I mean, like, with our normal fights, we normally just, like, fight in the morning, make up in the afternoon. But Mariah, she definitely helps. I mean, like, having her there and having her allowing, her, allowing me to tell her how I'm feeling. Just it, to bounce ideas off of. Yeah, it's, yeah, it feels, it calms me down and teaches me how to respond to Lindsay. That's good. That's good. So the next one, I don't want anyone to cringe at this one, but uh, experience in getting along with people of the opposite sex. Now, that doesn't mean dating or anything like that. That just means, you know, girls naturally flock together with girls, but you have to interact with boys at some point in time, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys wind up talking to each other about uh you know how the boys are acting or how they're treating each other yep i can t definitely say we do that a lot okay how about uh how about you mariah yeah you do we do we have do you guys both share the same idea of your same opinion i guess of boys yep yep yeah okay I think I know what that opinion is, but we won't delve into it here. <laughs> yeah, that to upset the other gender. Uh, okay, so they also say it's a chance to experience early romantic relationships. We're not going to talk about that one, I guess, huh? Yeah, just we the, don't Just the looks on your faces. We'll skip this one. Yeah, please. Okay, we'll yes. throw it out there just as a food for thought then. Yep. The last thing they have here is a social group. Uh, friends are a social group to do things with, especially things that are different from what families do. So as a family, we do a lot of different things together. Sometimes it's fun stuff. Sometimes it's sort of mandatory family things. But, you know, you get together with your friends, you get to do other things. What are some of the things that you like to do with your friends, Mariah? I um, like to crafts, go to the park, play basketball. Okay. Maddie? Well, I normally have either my friends come to my house or I go to my friend's house. 
And we normally, like, find something there to play with that we both like to do. Like, whenever I'm with Lindsay, we play with her LPS, and, like, we also, like, play with all the other toys. And, like, when people are at my house, we, like, do things there. And, like, this one time we did go uh, trick-or-treating, and that was fun. Mm -hmm. So I hope to do that again. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of fun. I remember doing that. Uh, okay, let's move on to the benefits of teen friendship. So this one comes from the Newport Academy. Uh, it's a social connection such as teen friendship create a host of positive benefits that include the following. And here's where we get to some of the health things. A higher functioning immune system. Did you know that? No, I did not. So because you're more active, I guess, it, it helps to stimulate the ability for your immune system to perform better. Two point. Uh, better self-esteem. Would you agree with that? Yep. How, how about you, Mariah? Does it help your self-esteem to, to hang out with your friends and have friends? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, I guess we'll say, mean people out there that tend to tend to drag people down and they're the ones that you the caustic ones that you try to stay away from. Yep. So having having a support system with friends to to show you who you really are and uh to help lift you up and feel good about yourself I think is very important. Uh it lowers the rates of anxiety and depression. I do agree with that. Um we had our whole podcast on depression there and and one of the things that you pointed out with Dealing with any kind of depression or anxiety has been, you know, your network of friends. How significant is that, you know, we're several podcasts in now, is that still a significant uh, contributor? Yep, it definitely is. It's Honestly, when I'm with my friends, I definitely feel very happy and calm and I don't ever feel like, and like, if, and I don't actually, and because of that pos all that positive energy, I really don't feel, um, when I'm with them, I don't feel as negative as I would normally be. Right. Right. Well, and I know in your case, Maddie, that, you know, whether or not you get to see your friends at school or at camp, your entire day hinges on that. So that's, that's significant in how much your friends mean to you. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's a good indicator. Friends can make us happier, more optimistic. We already talked about that. They can contribute to having a longer life expectancy. And I think that's largely a residual effect of the other physical effects. That, you know, being around positive people that accept you for who you are and allow you to, you know, embrace your, yourself entirely really helps you to live a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They provide a stronger emotional uh, support regulation skills. So as you face more challenges, your friends help you to cope with those challenges. I do agree with that. Mariah, do you find that when you run into situations where you're, you're facing some kind of emotional issue that, that you turn to your friends for support? Not really all the time, but sometimes. Okay. Does it help? A little. Okay. Well, that's, that's a good sign. Friendships, social connections with friends help improve your cognitive functions. You know what, you know what we, mean, we mean by that? No. So basically, when you have interactions with your friends, it helps you to think clearer. Like your friends tend to challenge you in social situations. Mm -hmm. Either they'll ask questions or they'll spark your imagination or, you know, just things that make your brain think more and create more connections in the brain. And, and that, again, contributes to a lot of the other physical effects that it has here. Then the last thing that they have here is they help to generate more empathy and feelings of trust towards others. Yep, I'd agree with that one. How about you, Mariah? Do you feel that being with your friends allows you to develop trust in your friendships? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. 
So that was all we had for that section. So the next one that we'll come back with here is tips for talking to your teens about friendship. And I'd like to get your guys' thoughts on that. Okay. This comes from a website called Very Well Family, and it's just a list of bullet points. So the first one says everyone's allowed to have many friends and many types of friends. So I guess this is a, a good time to ask some of the pointed questions. So Madison, how many friends do you say you'd have right now? Um, let's see. One, just a rough count. You don't have to give me a roll call. Um, I'd say about, off the top of my head right now, seven. Seven. I'm sure I have more, but seven's all I can really count right now. How about you, Mariah? Three or more. Three or more. Okay. And that, you know, it sounds like they're pretty tight groups when there's the numbers are that small. I'll be honest, I don't have that many friends, but my definition of friendship it's probably a little bit different, and it's changed significantly over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I have more associates than I have friends. Associates are people that I, you know, I'll do things with socially or or professionally, but friends are the people that I tend to hold close. Like I don't call a lot of people friends. You know, friends are the people, in my definition at least, friends are the people that that you can count on. You know, I can call when I need something, or they can call me when they need something. Friends are the type of people that I would trust my children with. And again, that, that definition's changed after becoming a parent, so uh, probably very different than what you guys consider friends. Honesty is important in a friendship. Would you guys agree with that? Yep, yep. How, how, Mariah, how would you deal with the, a friend who was dishonest with you? We tell them to be like, honest i won't like laugh or i won't judge because i'm not that kind of friend that does that mm -hmm. madison how would you deal with a friend who was dishonest well i tell them that i was one of their close if i'm one of their close friends they can trust me with anything they want to talk about i mean if they didn't want to talk about it i wouldn't force it out but if it wasn't something that if it was something that wasn't that important or if it was something that it was a problem with them, I'd want to know so I could try and fix it. That's interesting. Uh, both of you had a very uh, sympathetic approach to a dishonest friend, and I think that's very interesting. It's very telling of your characters. Uh, friends sometimes hurt each other, but they can always apologize and forgive each other. Now, Madison, you've told me that you've had arguments in the past with your friends and how you've dealt with that. Mariah, how would you typically deal with a friend who either hurt you or you hurt them and didn't intend to do, to do that? Well, me and Tara, when we were spending time together, like at her house or my house, sometimes we get in fights, but afterwards we um, end up apologizing to each other or Tara's brother, Brian, he fixes the fights. Okay, so a little outside intervention doesn't hurt in those situations. And, and you know, we all fight. All, all, we all fight with our friends. We fight with our family. It's, it's all a part of human nature. So how we deal with that afterwards, I think, is what's important. Mm -hmm. When you choose to be, when you choose to be your friend, who you choose. Wow, I really can't read today, can I? Who you choose to be your friend is important. It is essential that you choose. I skipped one. It's okay. I know. <laughs> it's essential that you choose wisely and that you benefit from the friendship. So when choosing friends, I guess this is the, the real question here. When choosing friends, what do you, Madison, look for in a friend? Well, what I look for is someone who would... Be there for me thick and thin. Um, I'd always, I'd also want to like find that a friend would be. I'd also want to find a friend who could trust me with some of their problems and, cause 
I'd be, I'd be very understanding. I wouldn't want to laugh at them or tell them something that they didn't want to do. I'm not that kind of friend. And um, I just make sure they trust me, they're a good person, and they wouldn't be one of those toxic friends who wouldn't really care about you and just go behind your back. Okay. Mariah, what do you look for in a friend? I look for honesty, caring, and a sweet friend because if you didn't have, if a friend didn't have all those types, then you'd probably get into more fights. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's funny as a story, a story that I had shared with Madison a few weeks back uh, regarding friendship. The best friend that I had in school growing up. Uh, we had actually met on a playground at one point in time, and he was making fun of me, and he and I got into a fight. And after that fight, we became best friends, and we were friends for 15 years after that. So it's kind of funny how you don't find friends. Friends tend to find you under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. It takes many learned skills to make and maintain a friendship. It also takes many skills to end a friendship. So what skills do you think it takes to make a friendship, Maddie? I think trust, kindness, and just an overall view of how good the person is. Just a positive look on the person. Okay, I'll buy that. Just for the record, I'm going to skip some more here. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. It can take time to make a good friend. It's often worth the effort because a good friend can be a confidant to help a teenager with stress or problems. Mariah, how easy is it for you to make friends? Like how long does it take you to make friends after meeting someone? It takes me a little while because I don't really talk much. I'm really shy. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think if you're going to make a friend and you're going to have someone who's going to play a crucial role in your life, like we talk about here, I think it's something that kind of takes time. You don't just make friends overnight, right? You know, that's an important role. It's kind of like interviewing for a job. You know, if I interview somebody for a job opening that I have, I don't hire the first guy that walks in. I'm, I kind of talk to a couple of different people and try and find the best person. Mm -hmm. And friends, sort of the same way. You don't go through a, a friend interview, but, you know, you're exposed to different people and you want to make sure that you're choosing people of good character to be your friends. Mm -hmm. A good friendship will make you feel good about yourself. It's okay for friends to outgrow each other. People change as they find new interests and people to hang out with as they mature. Now, I mention that because you guys are moving into a new school in the coming year. Mm -hmm. So some of you may be friends with underclassmen who aren't going to be in the new school, and you're going to be exposed to a lot of new kids that you've not met before. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a cautionary tale here to kind of expand. Don't be afraid to expand your friendship pool and make new friends. Unfortunately, you're going to be exposed to more people who probably are, are that caustic type that we've talked about. So it's going to be important to sort of stay away from those guys, but find the people that, that accept you for who you are. And they're the ones that are going to be friends through the next four to six years in school. So anyway, it's just my little philosophy there. Uh, let's move on to our next segment where we're going to do a little bit of question and answer. So some of these we've asked already. So I'll skip the ones that we've already talked about. Let me ask you, Madison, how often do you see or talk to your friends? Well, now in the summer, I'm able to see, like, my friend Lindsay often, like, at least three days a week because she only goes, like, three days a week. Oh, you mean Lindsay that lives literally right behind us? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's, that's hard to see her, huh? Yeah. I'm able to see, like, my friends who are my neighbors very often, like Delana, Lindsay, and Matt. 
well, I haven't been able to see Maddie in a while, but I'm pretty sure I'd be able to get a play date with all of us eventually. Right. I'm able to see Mariah. I mean, since me and Mariah go to the same school now and we're going to go into the middle school together, we'll probably see each other often. But for the summer, we don't really see each other often unless, like, we call each other, like, now. Like now, yeah. And my friends at summer camp, I normally just see them at summer camp, but I'm in contact with some of my friends there. Okay. I'm going to ask you the same question, Murray. How often do you see or talk to your friends? Um, often, because I always talk to Tara on, on Instagram, on chat, and Maddie often, too. Now, that's interesting that you pointed out. That, that, that generates, I think, a follow-up question on my part. How important are social media outlets for keeping in touch with your friends? Well, some of them are important. Like, you should only talk to the people that you really know. Sure, yeah. But do you find that to be um, a primary way for you to keep in touch with your friends? Yeah, because my Tara, she doesn't have her phone activated yet, so I, that's, like, the only way we can, like, get in touch with each other and talk. Oh, okay. Because I'll tell you, like, the way that teenagers contact each other today is very different than when I was a teenager. I mean, I was lucky if I could use the house phone. You know, you had one phone line at the time. You didn't have this personal communication that kids have now with instant messaging or cell phones or anything like that. So when I wanted to talk to my friends, I'd literally have to leave the house and go see them if I wanted to do something with my friends. And and uh, very different now with digital technology. Mm -hmm. Madison, do you have any friends that you don't see often but correspond with through social media online? Obviously, Mariah does. Well, yeah, but, like, I don't actually have actual social media, but Mommy always keeps in touch with my friends because most of my, some of my friends are, like, the kids from my children from my mom, from my mom's coworkers. Right. And they keep in touch with each other, and we're able to, like, see each other at least twice or Maybe even lucky three times a year, we're able to see each other multiple times a year. I mean, like, I'm not able to keep in contact with them, but we still, like, hang out and stuff. Okay, cool. And it's always nice to see them. And the last one here that we haven't asked is how easy is it for you to make friends? I'd say it's sort of easy, but a little hard as well. Sort of easy, but you're reluctant to do so? How about you, Mariah? How easy is it for you to make friends? Basically, like, the same thing that Maddie said. Okay. That's fair. I'm not one to make friends real easy, either. I'm not a particularly social individual. Although people seem to want to talk to me for some reason in, in public places, and I still don't understand that. Same here. So that was all the questions that I had. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Maddie, and let you ask Mariah some questions when we come back. Okay. So I think the first one we've already answered, but I want to just ask it again just for the audience. So Mariah, how many other friends do you have besides me? Three, I meant two. Okay. So the next question is, how close would you say we are? We are pretty cl close because we've known each other for um, a few years. Okay. That yeah, I you're only about two feet apart right now. We're pretty <laughs> close. Oh, my God. So um, I'm just going to go straight to the other question, but I'll ask the other. I'll ask the next question after I go to this question, just so that, since you already mentioned it. So, about how long do you think we've been friends? Like, about how many years? Five years, because second through um, sixth grade. Wow, that's a long time. Wow, that's the same answer I would give. 
Well, it's good to know both of you guys have the same math equation there. Gee, thanks. <laughs> All right, so the next question is, what do you remember about the time we first met? I know it was in second grade. I just don't really remember because it's been a while. Well, I think I can remember a little bit. Like, I remember me and me, you and Tara were because Tara went to our school in second grade, but didn't go the next couple of years. I remember that we would walk along like the pathway a couple of times and talk. So I think that's one of something to point out. Fond memories, right? Yeah, fond memories. Okay. And my final question is, what acti- which I think we already answered, what activities do you like to do with your friends? Um, like fun activities. Okay, that well, pretty much it. Yeah. That. Not many of us want to do boring activities, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. Anywho, I think that's all the questions I put down. Okay. Uh, Brian, did you have any questions that you wanted to ask? Me or Maddie? No? Okay. Well, I think that was it for our questions this week and our talking points. We'll come back and get closing remarks and shout outs. And I turn it over to you, Maddie. So, for everyone in the audience, I just want to say it's definitely important to have friends because, along with all the health benefits that we've gone over they'll help you have a more positive outlook on life and you'll be happier and if and i think it would be more important to have friends because you'll be able to talk about things you normally wouldn't be able to talk to other people about you have a good trust bond with them and basically find friends who will be the through thick and thin with you and instead of make fun of you for one of your problems okay Shout outs? I think I want to give a shout out to Mariah because this is the first time she joined us. I know she's not, I know she's shy, but like doing this podcast, I think is definitely, um, I definitely want to thank you for joining this podcast. It would probably be a lot boring. It would be more boring without you. Indeed. I think you did a fantastic job and I, I want to thank you for taking the time to come and sit with us and do the podcast as well. I hope you found it interesting, if not entertaining. It was. It was fun. Good. I'm glad. Yay. So I think that was all we had for this week, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll be back next week with uh, another great podcast. Bye, everyone. See you next week.